Welcome back, travelers of the internet, to Bright Home Record, and this is your host, Master Barkle, playing the Pillars of Eternity 2. And last we left off, we were in a bathhouse for a Seraphan. He's looking for his, um. Oh, who was it? Uh. Ramaro. And he's wanting us to head to Sayuka, uh, which. We want to have a look at the map is, uh, well, shoot, I don't know where Soyuka is, uh, but, anyways, we need to do some stuff here in Nakataka while we're doing it, because that does have some, a little bit of a difficulty, so we can maybe go Joti chasing Aethys, Shepherd, okay, right, Meryl the Mad at last, I guess we'll go to the Kahanga Palace and uh, speak with. Oh, what was her name? It doesn't say anything here. It was like Onikaza, wasn't it? It was the queen's name, Onikaza, I think. Let's go do that. Did the queen summon everyone to the palace? Akira, I've never seen Aruhi run so fast. Aruhi. Think the Audra Colossus would come here next. Pray to Kaopa, it does not. Kaopa. What is Kahopa? Ah, Bereth. Wait, Rikihu. Rikuhu. Oh, right, okay. So, like the many faces of Bereth, right. Hold a moment. You may visit the palace and its shrine, but be warned. Uh oh. The queen meets with trading company vipers. Take care you are not bitten. I have information for the queen. You will find her in her throne room through the door behind me. Inform the guards of your purpose. Well, that was quite easy. Whether the queen will hear you above the baying of her guests is another matter. The guard gestures toward the door, dismissing you. All right. esteemed Hazanui's confidence. I must wonder how my people are meant to have destroyed an entire colony overnight. The Valian dignitary aims a withering look across the aisle. A middle-aged woman with a square jaw and tar-stained teeth meets it. You tell us. It's no coincidence that your outpost at Port Maje survived the recent storm. She pulls a slender pipe from her pocket but at a look from the queen's attendants, she puts it away. You speak as if I could command the tides. While you are casting your blame in a wide net, why not look to our Kahunga allies? We do not share their talent for shaping water. Wow, there's a lot of hostility here. A sizable Amawa standing by the throne takes a bold step forward and flares his nostrils at the assembled dignitaries. A hush falls over the room. I say our guest forgets himself. He clears his throat and sweeps his gaze from Nero to the rest of the room. Brother, stand down. Up to this point, the queen has studied the proceedings with an even expression. She half rises from her throne as she fixates on Prince Aruhi. Aruhi. You are the one who mistakes my throne room for a sparring arena. I say this is beneath us. As Aruhi. His name's really hard to say. Lowers his head, the queen slowly centers her gaze on you, and leaves it there. An interesting visitor in difficult times. You cannot be here to deliver a favorable omen. Where's your voice echoey? Though her mouth doesn't move, Onikaza's voice comes to you like an insistent memory, nestled among your surface thoughts. I'll just nod. Allow me to apologize as I toss you before the wolves. Though she turns to the dignitaries, you still feel her attention on you. This one is a watcher blessed by Tangaloa. I suspect that many of our questions about her songo will soon be answered. The queen's voice fills the expanse of throne room, leaving you with a hushed silence to fill. Um... 
I came with a warning for the queen. How quaint of you to point this out in a room of warmongers and conspirators. Her mouth spreads in a knowing smile. You have the ear of the throne. Speak on, then. Onikaza leans forward in her throne. Ak, I know this one. His parlor tricks frightened ten years of every sailor in Queen's birth. Oh. You're right there. A little buggy. Raising her hand for silence, Onikaza looks to her brother. He approaches, and they exchange a few words too quietly to hear. She lifts her gaze to you once more. We assembled to discuss the darkening of Hasongo, one of Rawatai's colonies. Watcher, it seems you have the floor. She opens her palm and waits. Port Maje suffered similar damage when Earth has passed through. Uh, what sailor's tale is this? There's no sane explanation for what's been happening. You keep waiting for one, it'll be too late. That's right. Does tilling the soils of the Eastern Reach drive all men mad? You sound as crazy as the Dawnstar Dreamers. She looks at Adair the way one would look at an especially rabid but fascinating animal. Have you not heard the rumors, Karu? An Adra Colossus marching across the sea. Sailor tales, but credible ones. Nero crosses his arms, looking distinctly uncomfortable. How came a watcher from half the world away to be involved in these happenings? Enlighten the court. Aethus emerged from beneath Kanua, my castle. He made this person. Silence descends on the hall. Courtiers and delegates eye one another, seemingly gauging which of them will be first to laugh. A stern look from Queen Onakaza turns every questioning glance to stone. Tracking down a god who stands as tall as a mountain, a fisherman with poor eyesight could do this. Well, I'm not a fisherman with poor eyesight, okay? My priests will trip over their feet to interpret his divine plan. Watcher, can you cut through the din and tell for what he comes to the dead fire? Um... I'll need to find him first, or die trying, again. Silence falls once more as the courtiers and dignitaries trade uneasy glances, only the queen nodding slowly to herself into its your meaning. Your truth is more terrifying than many of the lies polluting this hall. She balances her chin on her fist. I believe our course is clear. We will send the Watcher to Hisongo. Onikaza spreads her hands, calmly assured of her reasoning. Set sail to the west of Nekataka. I would tell you to keep a weather eye out for a lighthouse, but the God of Light did not appreciate competition. Uh, that's... that's right. Something to add, Hazanui? You have an eager look about you. She believes herself entitled to my ear, I say. Onikaza's gaze wanders back to you only briefly. Only that Hasongo is a Rawatayan outpost. It would be useful for the Watcher to take one of ours along. She inclines her chin at another woman standing nearby. Ma'am. A composed Amawa stands at attention, her furrowed brow cleaving down otherwise warm features by her feet. A colorful bird preens itself without concern. Maya's an expert sailor and a better sharpshooter. The best the Brass Citadel has to offer. She looks you in the eye and gives you a slow nod. Whatever comes your way, she'll see it first. That's good. If it gets me and Ashiza have a diplomat duty, we'd set sail with a drunk scolder at the helm. Maya sighs with resignation and nudges her bird affectionately with her toe. Fuck. Perfito. Do you mean to stop Iothas by shooting him? Seri Pelagina will go with the Watcher. Show him how the Republic's handle things. Nero waves airily. The guard behind him coughs politely. Um, Your Excellency, Palagina Messerai has been banished? She has been seen in Queen's Bears. I can have a report to headquarters. Nero silences the guard with a withering look and a sharp gesture. You should feel no obligation to take on additional crew. The choice is yours. It's always good to have a rifle on hand. Say the word and I'll shoot the tip off a green boy's nose. 
off of M Maya? Uh, shooting Adair or something? Who's Green Boy? Oh, maybe Seraphin? Ishiza looks up at Maya and warbles something agreeable. You're making a mistake, Watcher. In times like these, trustworthy allies are the most valuable asset of all. Yeah? Calm down, Nero. I'm sure you'll get one of your spies in place eventually. A lazy half-smile tugs at her mouth. In the meantime, Watcher, I hope you'll meet me in the Brass Citadel. There's more for us to discuss among friendlier company. She glares briefly at Nero. I believe we are finished here. Are we here? Queen Onikaza rises from her throne, and the surrounding guards stand at immediate intention. Aren't we popular? Take care at Hasongo. The dead fire was overfull before Aethus blundered in. Onikaza nods to you as she adjourns. Your allies will use you toward any end. Do not give your trust lightly. Onikaza clears her throat and sweeps the room with her gaze. I say it is beyond time our guests lick their wounds somewhere else. He banishes the foreign dignitaries with a swift and unmistakably disgusted wave. Let's speak. Oh. Okay, so Maya's a ranger. Alrighty. Um, we kind of already got a ranger in the party, so uh, you could just sit out there. Oh, he wants to speak. Okay, well, first... To Queen's birth. Uh, let's just go to Queen's birth. I don't know where Pelagina may be. What did you do before you were a ship hunter? Ah, uh, rough times, lass. Would spare you the telling, lest you be set on it. I reckon I can handle it. Crew, I will. If they give me any job, they fought like to kill me. I'll live to prove them wrong. Can't live the good times unless you survive the bad. That would be in a pirate's all about. Aye, oh, sure enough. Besides, lasses say the scars be adding distinction. Uh huh. Well, anyways, where could Palagina maybe be? Maybe at the Valian Trading Company? They said they could summon her, I guess. So let's go down to there, I guess. Alrighty. I don't be supposing we could uh, blow it up. Oh, hey. If you've come on business with the Valian Trading Company, it will have to wait until morning. Wait. We're closed. Wait until morning. Guard tips her head in warning. There, if it has anything oh, to do with goodness. paperwork or wax seals, which covers most of what's in the building, I'm confident it can wait until morning. Well, sorry. I, uh... I guess I'll, um... I guess I'll wait. Okay. Palagina. Ado, Watcher. The Cantonichesi sent for me. It seems the Republics have need of me again, thanks to you. It is difficult to read her expression. The corners of her mouth briefly twitch into a smile, but there is worry in her eyes. Yeah, they asked you to spy on me, and you don't feel comfortable doing that, but you do wish to serve your nation once again. Do you have need of me? Uh, I suppose. Good. She nods sharply and steps forward. Paladin. Perfect. Okay. Seraphin, we don't need you right now. We got good party here now. There we go. Just quarry. Just make sure you get your great sword stuff activated. Alrighty. Now we head off for Hasongo, ah? You've received an important missive from Captain Ferrante. Dear Watcher, I find myself in need of someone with your particular brand of talents. As our last business transaction went so grandly, I appreciate the opportunity to hire you again. If you are interested, please convene with me in Tunnage. To our fortunate proceedings, Captain Ferrante. Destroy the letter? 
I don't think I will. I'll just keep a hold of it, really. But uh, first, we want to go to Hasango. Oh, hang on a second. It's got some skulls on it. We may want to go do some stu other stuff. I guess we can go to Dunnage then, since it's uh, a bit high level. Aeodul points at the ship in the distance. Galleon, Captain! A three-master it was. Or it was. Not remains of the ship's foremast save a splintered stump and the bowsprit has been sheared off. See how they crippled her? That's the work of pirates. Been cheapy, most likely. And probably the upstarts if they're raiding this close to Valian patrol routes. Chitupak leans in close. We will have taken any gold, but they might have left supplies. Irana's brow is damp with sweat. We shouldn't stick around. If the Valians see us plundering one of their ships, it won't give us a chance to explain. I'm salvaging it. There may be treasures on it. We take a small boarding party and scour the galleon. Most of its cargo and all of its crew are missing. But you do find several barrels of fresh water and a few sacks of dried rice and coarse meal. It takes your unseasoned hands the better part of the day to finish hauling it aboard. We got rice, hardtack, water, some pretty basic stuff. You're still aboard the galleon when a Bayadol calls out warning. A ship with the lines of a Valian privateer is speeding towards you. The crew aboard the Defiant scurry across the deck, readying the ship for combat. By the time you've returned to your ship, hauled in the anchor and let out the sails, the privateer is almost upon you. Your crew rushes to their battle stations. Oh. I guess the ship doesn't really care. Little Luika points to a dark spot on the distant horizon. Captain, a vessel approaches! You squint to the horizon and see unfamiliar colors snapping in the breeze. Alrighty. The ship draws near and its crew throws open the gun ports. Honestly, I don't know if we have much of a chance for naval combat here. We may just want to go close to board and fight them like that, because they're only level 5. Their crew ain't that strong. We want to we wanna board them. The crew mutters nervously as you give the order to charge. The Defiant will be exposed to raking fire and the risk of casualties. 7 to 15 hull and 1 to 7 sails. We can we can take that. Your ship chews through the water, barreling down the back of waves and surging up the face. Sea spray drenches the main deck. With a deafening crunch, the Defiant and the Elysio collide, sending shards of wood and enemy sailors flying. Results. Received eight hull damage, two sails damage. Okay, not too bad. With a rousing cry, your crew throw grappling hooks and boarding planks across the gap between the two ships. They stream onto the ship's decks, weapons at the ready. The stunned enemy crew rally and meet your sailors with the resounding boom of gunfire and clang of steel on steel. Goodness, they're taunting us already. They got a lot more than two ship defenders, I gotta say. Alrighty, uh, punk, go meet them. Halogena head on over here, because they're probably going to try to jump across. I dare go meet them. Eloth step off to the side, and allow the auto to play a little bit. Alrighty, Seraphin, dealing with Shelia up there, I guess. Oh goodness, I'm already in the melee. Halogena jump across and go get them. You guys just let the, them come right through. Tonk. Tonk. Yeah, they didn't stand that much of a chance. Alright, 
And there we go. We done it. And we get rewards out of them. You've received an important missive from Captain Aldis, like immediately after dealing with the Valians. That attacked me. Remember everyone, they attacked me. Wine and gunpowder scented letter. So you had a little run-in with Ben, and then you dragged it to my doorstep. You could have wiped your feet before you stomped in, but I digress. I know what you did, and I know who you are. And unlike my unfortunately block-headed second-in-command, I recognize a threat when it smacks me upside the head. So this is me, Captain Aldis, commander of the God's damned New Blood Prince, Sheep, the leader of the second largest fleet of pirates in the God's fucking dead fire, inviting you a terrifyingly powerful and strange watcher to come and meet with me under the strictest parlay at Fort Deadlight. Which is to say, I promise not to gut you when you arrive for dinner and drinks. Looking forward to having a little hearthside chat. I would like to offer you a partnership of the most glorious and goriest variety. I scratch your back, you gut my enemies from hip to jaw. We laugh at their deaths over a bottle of the finest rum. Oh, and when you come, bring some candied nuts. Your newest and dearest friend, Aldis. P.S. This is not a trap. It most certainly sounds like a trap. Anyways, onwards to Dunnage. Alrighty, now we're in Dunnage. You shake your faith in the republics, Palagina. Some people believe in the gods. I believe in the republics. They will endure long after I am gone. But do you ever wonder what they'll become? Of course. But my place is to protect the republics for those who will shape its future. Alrighty. Well, anyways, arriving in Port Dunnage. My goodness. It's awful. What? Between menace, that I did made me want to poke out my eyes. Okay. Uh, seems like a pirate's town, all right. We've got, you know, harbor junk just tossed about. Udita? Damn me for a butt slice of hard sack. It's... it's you, ain't it? The pale elf squints at you and puffs on her pipe. Acrid smoke from the bowl wreaths her face. Uh, do I know you? Of course not, but I know you like I know the curve of my eleventh toe. She winks and shuffles closer. That's weird. The Watcher, captain of a mighty ship, god chaser and fiend slayer. Must be expensive sustaining a reputation like that, eh? She rubs her fingers together. What do you mean, so expensive? I'll keep it quick, see? If your little dinghy's got some choice in it, I've got a list of captains with a black mark to their name whose ships need a quick scuttling. And I'm in the market for a scuttler. She sticks the pipe in the side of her mouth and grins, showing a mouth full of yellow teeth. So you're another bounty giver. Okay, that's cool. If I ever need some money, I know where to go. Who is a neglected pig up there. Go get it, Adair. Chauncey. Chauncey is a good name for a pig. Why are you giving me too hard of stuff? Oh my goodness gracious. Maybe we do want to go to Sayuka. Search for signs of Romaro. Because this one doesn't have difficulty... Difficultness to it. We're out of here. <laughs> but while we're here anyways, we may want to go talk with Aloth about his predicament. 
or at least it, why he's in the, the dead fire, you know, looking for animancers and uh, the leaden key, stuff like that. Yes. Um, I guess I could just talk with him. Like your thoughts on my search for Aethys? One would hardly imagine that a colossus made of glowing Ardra could be so hard to find. Yeah. But then I suppose the gods wouldn't have chosen you if the task were easy. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, did you ever make it back to Adir? As a matter of fact, I did. How was the family? I saw my mother for the first time in years. There's a lightness in his eyes and in his posture that you've never seen before when he... Speaking of his family. My goodness, I'm getting too many hiccup burps. How was your mother? She was well. She'd been living with her thane for quite some time. I don't think she'd been to see my father since I left. He fidgets with the hem of his garment, looking distractedly at something on the ground. I used to blame her for her long absences. For not intervening directly with my father. Uh, what changed with your mother? I realized that she was torn between two demanding roles. And two demanding men. He looks back up at you. In case people don't remember, Aloth's father was a bit, a bit on the abusive side, you know, like, oh my goodness, Aloth, I can't believe you're not getting A pluses across the board in your schooling and would, you know, beat Aloth from time to time. I used to resent her for failing to protect me, but I understand now that her absence is what allowed me to grow. I mean, I guess. Intentionally or not, she gave me the space I needed to learn a degree of independence. That's one way of looking at it. But not yours? A wry smile curls his lips. It's all right. After all, it took me quite some time to reach this understanding. Uh, did you see your father? He shakes his head, his lips pressed tightly together. It's one thing to forgive my mother for her absence. Quite another to excuse him. Sounds like it was a good trip, then. It was. Well, uh, I guess we'll get back to it. And all... Crooksburg Captain, 10th level Rogue Crooksburg. Are they more pirates? Are they different pirates? We're just gonna board them because they got a way stronger vessel than I do. I really need to get like a galleon for myself or something. I bet that's expensive. I don't have that much money. Alrighty. Make sure everyone's AI is on and working. Okay, Pelagina, head on over this way. Or since you're there, head that way. Go this way, Adair, head that way. Roland, Shorty and Aloth can do what they're doing. Seraphin's right across the deck. Hey, Aloth, or Adair, go get that wizard back there. Yeah, they weren't too difficult. Alrighty. Is there someone else? Oh. There's a guy here. Um... Are they okay? There they are. Finally back. They just decided to send themselves to the ether. Alrighty. Got some experience. We got a lot of loot. And they did attack me after all.
Wow, that ship's real bouncy there. Is it alright? These are some cool coral things here. Welcome to okay, I have been welcomed. Uh, where would be a good spot to start looking? Oh yeah, let me get... Um, crap, do I need to get back on the Defiant to do that? <laughs> Shoot. Be right back. Okay, now we're back with uh, Seraphin. Uh, where would be a good place to start? Maybe the Fleet Master's office? Maybe the Longhouse? It's a pretty small port, I, to be honest. But it's well fortified, I guess. Um, it doesn't really give us any tip here. Nope, I'm just looking for somebody. Fleet Master Okaya stares with unwavering intensity at the small sea of papers strewn across her desk. She holds a pencil lightly in one hand and absently taps the tip of it against her lips. After a moment, a low hum escapes her throat. The sound ends with a harsh scoff. Then she flicks her eyes to meet yours. Artillery trajectory calculations. Terribly tedious and lamentably imprecise in a storm. Yeah. As she chews on the end of her pencil, her gaze grows distant, like she's watching something behind you. Ah, but the numbers distract me. Where are my manners? You found me with a rare spare moment. Uh, who are you? Did you not read the name on the door before you came in? You do know you're in the office of the Fleet Master, I hope. I didn't notice. Sorry? A bold strategy, walking through any unlocked door you come across. Careful you don't get yourself killed doing that. Ah, I'll be fine. I'm a fleet master of the Rawatayan Navy stationed at Sayuka, a research colony of the Royal Deadfire Company. Uh, what are you researching? Andra's mortar. Storms that strong, that consistent. I suspect they're not natural. Well, is anything about the gods natural? Um, I see. Well... Um, I'll just leave you there, I guess, since you don't really have any information for me regarding Oramaru. So let's go to that, uh... Oh, there's a stray cat. Bernhard. Let's go to that longhouse we saw earlier. Um, I would say not, probably. Over, then under, then twist. Good. Hey, Kira, it looks so easy when you do it. Man, is this just where everyone sleeps? This is kind of cramped. But I guess they're pretty family together in this... Middle-aged Kawaru woman raises her brows in question when you approach, her hands too full with braided ropes of dried reeds to greet you properly. Beside her stands an elderly Ruparu man, awkwardly grasping his own bundle of reed rope. Oh, hello. Come to watch me tie rugs, have you? Well, no. Asaru, he has been teaching me. He indicates the woman beside him with the dip of his chin. The corner of his mouth twitch like he's trying to hide a smile. What say, traveler? Um. Never mind. Wins with you, traveler. Just fair farewell. Can I harass this guy up here, Waturi, who gets his own bed? Those Raparu dare make such a racket in my longhouse. What were those royal dead fire fools thinking? Yeah. At least the royal dead fire company built you a better home, man. I don't need a better house. I need privacy. They don't have privacy down there. He throws up his arms with a wordless shout. A brief hush falls over the longhouse at the Mataru's outburst. What do you want? Your room's much nicer than the others. I am Mataru, a warrior. 
The best quarter is a mine by right. Uh -huh. And yet I cannot display my most precious possession, my grandmother's warhammer, for fear the Raparu might steal it. It is absurd. Goodness. Well, a farewell. You're not any helpful to me. Perhaps we need to find some other kind of ship master or uh, ship hunter kind of person. Um, like, uh, like, like a Principi, like Seraphin, maybe. Oh, a lonely dog. Man, so many pet people just leave their pets just lying about. Sorry about that. Maybe there's something in the, the warehouse? A workshop? Or maybe it's right there, Romaro! Oh, Boy, Cap, there he be. There be Romaro. Sure is my ass be blue. Seraphin runs to meet an old white-robed man. I wish you'd not come, my lad. Pleased though I be to see you. Even Aldi's anarchists spare no mercy for mutineers. Seraphin breaks away and peers up at Romaro. Aye, but you, a traitor? The very thought of it be ludicrous. He spreads his open palms wide to either side. Return with us. I'll be protecting you, and we'll be seeing in your fair judging. With a slow shake of his head, Romaro swallows. I can't, Blue. Much as I loathe to leave. I'm dead to these waters, and they to me. Seraphin gapes and sputters before finding his response. Break more biscuits and call me swabby. You've gone addled in your dotage, ain't you? Orlin looks to you, lower lip twitching. Captain, can you talk some sense into this crusty old salt? Why did you leave Fort Deadlight? You might have been safe there. I couldn't bear to remain, sheltered or no. It's a hopeless feeling. Bearing witness to the slow decline of something I once held such pride in. There still be pride to be had. Honor, too. Things be changing, sure as shit. But you can't thread them narrows if you ain't even it to wheel. I hope I'm wrong. If only for your sake. I don't think the Principe can survive as is. And I can't watch something I devoted my life to sink into ruin. Why would you leave the Principe? The Principi have changed, and not for the better. Once, we aligned behind a common purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, we fractured into two extremes, each wallowing in its own corruption. Where do you intend to go? My crew, those few souls who followed me from the Sorcerer, and I set sail for lands west. The Reach, perhaps, or the Living Lands. Perhaps we'll run trade from Edir or Valia. Wherever fortune leads. Wherever is away from here, I guess. But that be the far fucking side of Aora. Ach, a journey and a half, to be certain. Is it true what you are accused of? I've not heard every charge against me. But that of mutiny, of that charge, I bear guilt. Seraphin's ears droop. He reaches for Romaro, but stops short, letting his hands fall. Why? The sorcerer were our own and kin. We're a cock swelling pride. And you bartered it to an half drowned old elf for a pint built fucking clipper. Staring intently on the ground at Romaro's feet, Seraphin shakes, his fists bald at his sides. Fourteen years I spent swabbing them decks. Longer yet for you. Captain Bastion trusted you. I trusted you. His glare rises to meet Romaro's eyes. Ach, bon Nico. Romaro's mouth opens briefly before closing again and he swallows. Sientere, Seraphim. I've disappointed you. Hurt you. No words can justify my actions. I only hope you believe me that I did what needed doing. How can I? With a tired shrug, Seraphin looks away. Seraphin, you've heard Romaro's confession. What would you do with him now? Cut him loose, Captain. Let him hold this shit close to his bilge rat heart. For what beats be remaining it. Very well. We'll leave you be, Romaro. Agra Sima, Watcher. The clipper will be loaded soon, and then we'll be away. 
Cores, Seraphin. Bon Aimico. Take this. May you have rare cause to use it. You provide Seraphin with a tightly wrapped package. Ah, gone. I hope we meet again someday. On calmer seas. Cores, Bon Amico. Seraphin turns away. Oh, well. Captain. Uh, if I could bend your ear a moment, uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. A third hand at his belly and one heel out, he bows deep, drooping ear almost touching the ground. You run a tight shop, and you ain't no terrible person neither. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. You're welcome. I've a uh, gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Malnage would have snatched it had I not found the perfect hiding spot. The perfect hiding spot? Where did you hide it? I don't know where I to tell you that. You mightn't want it no more. Seraphin gives an innocent whistle while scratching his ass as subtly as one could scratch it. Mmm. <laughs> Just a jest, Cap. Nay, I tucked it away in my beard. Didn't wear braids back then, so my hair caught about everything from feathers to fish bones. Sometimes I hide my special dice away in my beard as well. Malnar shook me down for plunder after each raid. I figured out she wouldn't go nowhere near my beard. Said my face were like a saw rip fetish. Hey, why did Malnar treat you so badly? I don't really know for sure, Cap. Thought at first she wanted me. Lasses be that way sometimes, treating you worse the more they fancy you. It's a rare occurrence, but sure. Given she tried to get me killed twice within our first fortnight together. I thought mayhap she were in deepest love. So what was the issue? As I said, uh, I never rightly figured it out. It worked that I were all in, given she were too. Romaro said she might have been emerald green with envy, but uh, I'll be well self if I know what's of. He shrugs his palms up and spread wide. Maybe she thought you were a threat. As a ship hunter, uh, mayhaps. I've certainly outpaced her since, if I do say so myself. Mayhap she saw that coming. Well, thank you for the gift, Seraphin. You be entirely welcome. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've round about reached my limit for sentiment. Seraphin salutes, grinning broadly, and turns away. Well, he still has more things to say to me. Well, let's just get that over with, I guess. An eyebrow, the blue of the open sea, rises over an iris, the warm green of the shallow surf. You be boring a hole in me with them eyes, Captain. I'd offer an oval for your thoughts, but, uh, I prefer not to make deals I ain't got no intention to keep. I know things could have gone better back on Sayuka, but they could have gone worse, too. Aye. We could have gone and done something we couldn't be taken back. He rubs the bridge of his nose. Or mayhaps we did just that. If you want to talk, I'll listen. I'm not sure there'll be much to say. Captain. He looks away. Sayuka was a tough break. Only thing to do is to pick yourself up and keep moving. Nodding, the Orlin expels a long, slow sigh. It be the shit like this that turns us old salt sad. He stretches and turns away. Well, now that Seraphin's got his. A kind of closure on Romaro. We will be seeing you next time. Oh boy, I sure did enjoy Master Barkle's lastest video. I, I could say the same. I made sure to leave a like and comment on his video to let him know I appreciated it.